This slide film presentation will show you frightening techniques for airfield bird control. The most practical method combines bioacoustics, the use of bird distress calls, with pyrotechnics, the use of noise-making devices. The species vary, but birds are found on every Air Force base. Starlings are a common pest. Sparrows, likewise. Grackles are found on every southern base, as well as other parts of the country. Like the rest of the blackbird family, they are a common pest. There are others, pigeons, crows, gulls, waterfowl, geese, ducks. Birds can be a serious threat to flight operations. Airfield bird control is therefore a serious business. It depends first on the correct identification of the birds to be controlled. Those that most often threaten flight operations are flocking birds. In addition to knowing what birds threaten flight operations at a specific base, anyone responsible for bird control must know the most practical combination of bird frightening techniques. Bioacoustics and pyrotechnics. There are other bird control methods that may be used as supporting measures, but have several limitations. For example, the use of bird models in dead or distressed positions. Unfortunately, some species soon catch on to the fact that the models represent no threat, while some species do not react at all. Because the birds soon become indifferent or habituated to the models, the models must be moved frequently. Their use is recommended only to reinforce a combined bioacoustics and pyrotechnics frightening program. Birds are just as quick to catch on to the sound of noisy bird alarms, particularly if they always come from the same direction and from a fixed source. Ultrasonic devices are not effective. Birds hear sounds in the same range we do. Radio-controlled model aircraft are extremely effective in bird control, even more so when painted to resemble predators. Birds never lose their fear of these threatening machines, which can be used to herd flocks away from runway areas. But this is also only a supporting operation. It is also expensive, and dependent on volunteer help. Falconry is extremely effective in bird control. Birds never lose their fear of this predator, but this is another expensive measure that depends on volunteer support. Falconry, therefore, remains only a good supplementary measure where available. Because of the limitations of all other bird frightening techniques, the Air Force Bird Control Program rests on bioacoustics and pyrotechnics. But these principal bird control measures are most effective when an airfield management program has made runway approach, landing, taxiway, and takeoff areas as unattractive as possible to flocking birds. Even after habitat modification to water-filled areas, landfills and other sites attractive to birds, flocks will still occasionally return to settle on the field no matter how unattractive it has been made. It then becomes necessary for those concerned with bird control, which may vary from one base to another, to apply the correct frightening techniques that will drive the birds from areas where they might interfere with flight operations. Correct bird control techniques include bioacoustics, which involves the recording of bird distress or alarm calls on tape. Every Air Force Base library of distress calls should include those for all species which emit distress calls 
and are in the area and threatening flight operations. Those birds must first be identified so that the correct distress tape can be selected to drive them off. The bioacoustic technique is somewhat limited to flocking birds that do give distress calls. This includes gulls, blackbirds, starlings, crows, and ravens. While there is a varying degree of response between blackbirds to some distress calls, all types of blackbirds might be dispersed by the distress call of any particular blackbird. The same is true for gulls. All types of gulls may respond to any specific gull distress call. Gulls and blackbirds may not always respond, however, to one particular distress call. In selecting tapes, it should be remembered that species-specific distress calls are always the most effective. In addition to a library of taped distress calls, an effective bird control program requires use of a small truck or van properly equipped for both bioacoustics and pyrotechnics. Sound equipment includes a tape deck and amplifier capable of producing recorded bird calls with distortion-free sound and at the proper volume. The truck carries a high-powered speaker or speaker array capable of reaching the birds with clearly reproduced distress calls. The vehicle is driven to within 100 to 200 meters of the birds and stopped. The truck is parked with the speaker facing the birds. The proper distress call is played for 15 to 20 seconds and then shut off. If within 20 seconds the birds have not moved, the distress call is played again. Do not repeat calls continuously. If recorded distress calls are played indefinitely, the birds will become habituated to the distress calls and ignore them. Not all birds respond to bioacoustics. When they do, their first response will often be to fly toward the sound source, circling it before moving off. This should not be discouraging, even though now, in flight, the birds may present a greater danger to aircraft than they did on the ground. If the birds are alert, but do not fly in two to three cycles, or flush and fly toward the sound, immediately begin to fire pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics involves the use of noise-producing devices or techniques which frighten and effectively disperse the birds. The noise and an explosive flash is produced by a commercially available firecracker or scare cartridge fired from a standard M8 Very or flare pistol. This is included in the technical order, but must be modified to accept the 12 gauge cartridge with a locally manufactured steel sleeve insert. The Very pistol with its steel sleeve insert will fire the explosive charge 40 to 50 meters to produce a large noise and the explosive flash. This technique is highly effective in flushing flocks of birds and directing them toward a new location. Anyone working with pyrotechnic equipment should be trained in its use and wear proper safety gear, including ear protectors, safety glasses, and protective gloves. All safety procedures established in AFR 127-100 should be followed. The very pistol should never be fired toward aircraft, buildings, or people. When fired, the shot should be placed to direct the birds away from the flight operations they threaten. For example, a scare cartridge exploded between the birds and an active runway will drive the flock in the desired direction. Away from the runway. The same effect can be achieved from a greater distance by firing the scare cartridge with a standard open-bore 12-gauge shotgun. 
The shotgun will fire the scare cartridge for distances up to 100 meters, which may sometimes be an advantage. However fired, with the very pistol or 12-gauge shotgun, the scare cartridge is often highly effective in flushing flocks of birds and directing them away from flight operations. Finally, in using either the pistol or shotgun, pick up any unexploded shells or other materials that might cause foreign object damage to aircraft. There are other devices and techniques for effective bird control than those already discussed and with which you should be familiar. Among these is another pyrotechnic device, the gas cannon. This is authorized in the table of allowances. It is a hollow tube that directs flame and sound from an explosion or blast of propane fired by a spark plug. The gas cannon may be fired from a raised platform and above any vegetation which might muffle the sound. The gas cannon is highly directional with an explosion, several times louder than the sound of a 12-gauge scare cartridge. It is effective over a 10-acre area, but unless the cannon is regularly moved, at least once a day, birds become habituated even to its loud noise and bright flash. The gas cannon is expensive to purchase, but inexpensive to use. For example, to cover a C-5 runway effectively would require several cannon and their continuous movement. But the gas cannon is very effective against most species, particularly against waterfowl. Some warning words about all pyrotechnic methods used in bird control. They can be dangerous and destructive. Never use pyrotechnics without close coordination with the control tower to prevent bird interference with flight operations. Caution should be taken not to direct birds toward operating aircraft and to ensure safety. When using pyrotechnic devices of any kind, always stick with the safety procedures in Air Force Regulation 127-100. Now for some bad news. You should know that birds may respond to a combined and effective bird control and airport management program by leaving and staying away for two or three months. But they will often return to areas from which they've been frightened away to reinforce the flock's desired response to standard frightening techniques, it may be necessary then to use a few rounds of live ammunition and kill two or three of a flock. But depredation permits are required from both state and federal governments to kill even one of most species. Depredation permits are not required for the European starling, the house sparrow, and the domestic pigeon. When shooting to kill unprotected birds or any others for which depredation permits have been secured, wear proper safety gear and follow all firearm safety procedures. Live ammunition should be used during flight operations only when absolutely necessary and then with extreme caution. Safest time for the use of live ammunition is during non-flying hours, early in the morning or on weekends. In any case, always be certain there are no aircraft, buildings, or people in your line of fire. Aim to hit only a bird in flight, preferably one from the center of the flock. In that way, all birds in the flock may see one of their number fall. Some of the flock will fly in to circle over and confirm the kill, but the flock will disperse, their fear of gunshot noises reinforced. You will have noted by now that the birds most effectively controlled are game birds, or flocking birds which have distress calls, and have learned to associate gunshot noise with danger. You should remember that even though all flocking birds will occasionally return, 
to well-managed and unattractive areas from which they have been driven off. A persistent, diverse, well-managed bird control program will greatly reduce their threat to flight operations at any Air Force base. Persistence is the word for effective bird control. A combination of bioacoustics and pyrotechnics supported by a continuing base program of habitat modification. Effective bird control on any Air Force base involves the ongoing support and cooperation of all concerned with the safety of flight operations. Uh, Rov 1, cleared number 1, bird condition yellow. Use caution, standard departure. No bird control measures should be undertaken without coordinating with the tower to determine when, where, and what bird control measures will be planned. The end is well worth the effort. The safety of Air Force pilots and planes in flight at every Air Force base, and there's help to keep them safe. The BASH office is only a phone call away to give you information and assistance you may need for any problem you may have with bird control. So is the Department of Agriculture, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service office nearest you. There's an office in every state. They're all listed in the Bird Aircraft Strike Hazard or BASH guidance package, which gives you all the information you need to get into the serious business of effective bird control. Effective bird control, it's up to you.